Here and now, here and now again uh, with Dr. Abraham Weisfield of, of the Bundist uh, Socialist Jewish uh, Group and me, uh, Ahmed of Palestine, talking about events in, in the Arab East, especially in Palestine and uh, the Zionist genocide going on uh, in Gaza and um, on the West Bank and their war uh, against uh, Hezbollah and Iran and everywhere else, the Zionists are nothing but a bunch of terrorists. They live and thrive on terrorism and hatred. Mm. So uh, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Welcome, We're Steve. Calling... Sorry, is Steve is on? Steve is here. And thanking you oh, for okay. your, in your solidarity here, Steve, today in this discussion of Palestine. I wanted to uh, <clears throat> point out that, you know, the uh, Zionist offensive has changed now. It's moved to the West Bank from Gaza. They've they had uh, four brigades have been pulled out of Gaza. Now there's only two brigades left, preparing supposedly an assault on Rafa. That they uh, worked out a deal with the United States to, uh, you know, uh, do a mild response to Iran in exchange for permission to go and uh, take Gaza apart. Yes. Okay. But where are the troops now? In the West Bank, in Nablus, in the refugee camp, in Janine, everywhere there. there. And why? And why? Well, they don't have RPGs in the West Bank. <laughs> That's one good reason. Well, well, what happened is about over a week ago, a settler boy who was uh, on uh, an rampage with other uh, Zionist boys, they call them the, the Hills boys, who terrorized the, uh, the farmers in the West Bank. He kind he of went missing. All right. So uh, pogroms took place that the Zionist settlers thought the, Palestine, the, the Jewish boy, or the Zion, I won't call him Jewish, sorry, Zionist boy, because there's a big difference between Judaism and uh, Zionism. He was kidnapped and killed. And pogroms took place around uh, in the area between Nablus and Ramallah, like between from the north to middle of the West Bank. They actually ensuing burned homes, all of trees. They murdered two Palestinians, tens been injured. Just three days ago, they found the body of this boy who died by a snake, a snake bite. Oh. Okay. So, so he was he ran away because the Palestinian, you know, uh, uh, you know, counter attacked him. He kind of somehow went in a hiding. When in his hiding, a snake bit him, died, and nobody oh, know where no. he is. So it, uh, the pogrom took place. In the palace, you know, the reaction to the pogroms, uh, more resistance and more resistance need more uh, Gestapo. Oh, I'm sorry, more Israeli uh, <laughs> police, uh, our border guards, our army to fight. And the more the Zions to bring in uh, war machinery, the more there is crimes against humanity uh, on the West Bank and the more resistance. So this is how it works. And of course, they brought in more and more, uh, you know, forces. Um, there's over 800 different uh, Israeli road, road uh, blocks or checks across the West Bank. Um, they are um, <clears throat> humiliating, uh, hitting, uh, torturing, uh, you name it, on these checkpoints for all the Palestinians across the West Bank. And uh, what's going on, it's, um, I would call it a, a slow a slow cooking uh, genocide brewing on, on the West Bank by the Zionists versus a highly high cooking, uh, in explo highly exploded uh, genocide uh, in Gaza. Um, the Zionists... Uh, they're, as I said earlier, they're stuck 
to start with their war mongering. They thought by using uh, terror and, and slaughter, and, uh, destruction, mayhem, uh, uh, racist narratives will scare the Palestinians uh, to uh, submission. They didn't know that the Palestinian people are, are, are not going to capitulate. People don't capitulate. You know, maybe armies capitulate, maybe groups capitulate, not the people. The people never capitulate. So uh, they're stuck. They're stuck. They didn't know what to do. Mm. Uh, even if they want to go to Rafah, well, what are they going to accomplish? More m murder, more death, more destruction. And they cannot uproot the people's resistance. People are resisting. It's not Hamas or uh, Jihad or PFLP who are resisting. It's the people. It's the people in Gaza are resisting. Resisting by arm, by stat, stat, stat fasting, by refusing to leave their homes, by uh, fighting back, by eating whatever little left for them, just to stand as a resisting to the Zionist uh, I would call it a Holocaust. It's a it's a real Holocaust. The Zionists are perpetuating on the Palestinian people. It's a, it's a twenty first century Holocaust. It has different uh, you know angles and different uh, meaning, but in the end, it's the burning out of the Palestinian people alive, whether by starvation or by murdering them, or by wholesale uh, humiliation. So uh, exactly one Holocaust do not justify another. And that's what's happening in, 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 uh, in the Zionist panic. It, it's sad to, to say, it's so sad to say that the Zionists, they were the collaborators of the first Holocaust and the first 20th century. Now they are using that Holocaust where they were part of it as a perpetrators as the same again doing the same thing to the Palestinian people. And it's not going to work. Israel yeah. is going to lose and going to lose big time. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. Steve, you've oh. been following this. What do you think? Well, I want to comment on what happened with the settlers because I saw some videos on Telegram, the settlers getting ready to make some attacks. Um, I would like to know what was said in Israel or in the West Bank after the boy was found deceased by the snake bite. What was said after that? The kind Nothing. Of, yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, the, the, kind of, the kind of pogroms that um, were faced by the Palestinians. The same thing that Black Americans faced in the early nineteen, in the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, up, really up through the up through World War Two, where white mobs would grab Black men in jail and just lynch them when they were accused of crimes against white, always a crime against white women. They always said yeah. we had to go, we had, we had to rape the white girl, we had to just have sex with white men. We're, we're just so depraved. And you know, and there was a was a trial that just came out and just lynched us, yeah. the, 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 and and lynched and then burned the bodies, yeah. lynched you and burned the bodies. So it's the same thing. That's why I always equate it. I always find many many similarities be, be between the Palestinian struggles and, and and the Black American struggles. I I I um I figured no one had made any no apologies or you know nothing you know or nobody tried to you know, do anything to set the situation right with those people who were terrorized by, by, those, by those settlers. Because the settlers just do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, just nothing. And this, this boy, unfortunately, you know, died of a snake bite. I'm sorry he fell in such a way, but with the people who were who were killed and and the property destroyed, you know, oh, well, oh, well, the way it goes, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. terrible. I'm very, I'm and and these, set, these settlers, uh, Steve, <clears throat> that previously only had sticks and stones that they were fighting with, now have automatic rifles that were handed well, to them by well, the minister Ben Giver, who yeah. set up the National Guard, which is a fascist militia under his direct control. And they are in a campaign to expel the Palestinians from the West Bank now. This is their objective. And Absolutely. they talk in Holocaust terms. Yes, it's true, Ahmad, 
the Zionists just gave in to the Nazis and let the Holocaust take place. And they were That's only it. concerned about saving their own party members. 60,000 from Germany and 1,843 from Hungary. And that's it. And then they didn't even yeah. tell the Jewish people, you know, to to run away to the Soviet Union or something like my parents did. Nothing. The Zionists did nothing for the Jewish people. It's a disgrace. That's true. That's true. You know, I, I would not be surprised. It, it could be far-fetched, but when you have a mind of racists like the Zionist settlers uh, on the West Bank, by the way, they're no different than the rest of so-called Israelis in the in Israel proper, they say that it could be that uh, the Palestinians held the boy and they brought in the snake and let it bite, bite him. <laughs> they, they, you know, there's this kind of mentality when oh, you're man. racist. Oh, man. Sick. When you're racist uh, and a fascist, you're simplistic and you would think everybody's like you would buy you into your story. It's like the story of, uh, like in the, in the, in the Nakba, that... Uh, we told the Palestinians to, not to leave, but they left on their own. It's the same thing. No, yeah. Nothing nothing fall uh, of this kind of uh, simplistic, uh, outlandish uh, mindset. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's disgusting. It's yeah. really mm. disgusting. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the pogrom uh, character, you know where they learned this from? They're, you know, like these pogroms, they started, okay, under Tsarist Russia. But it started even before that in England, where the Anglo-Saxons decided that the the Jewish, the British Jewish Anglo-Saxons living there uh, conducted some kind of religious ritual in which they took a Christian baby, killed it, took the blood from the baby, mixed it in with wheat, and made matzahs to eat for Passover, you know, for... Passover. Yes, yes, I heard that story, yes. Okay, and this is, you know, like in the 1200s, and then That's in 1290, right. all the Jewish people in England were expelled, and they were only allowed to come back with Cromwell, who only allowed them to come back if they were willing to become uh, agents of England in colonizing Palestine. He wanted to convert them into Anglicans. This is all Anglicanism. You know, the national uh, theocratic doctrine of the nation state and monarchy of England. And all of the European countries are infected with this mental illness. And uh, they would go to the Jewish ghettos in England and they would murder a whole bunch of Jewish people just because they said that this was once done somewhere, somewhere, somehow. But they don't have any proof. <laughs> Of it's... course not. Of course not. That's that's. This is this is what I said. You know, like uh, I would not be surprised at all to hear that uh, the uh, the Zionist uh, in Palestine uh, perpetuating a story that that uh, poor Jewish boy was held by Palestinian farmers and brought in a snake to bite him in order to make it look. Uh, you know, it's the same thing. The same idea of of. Uh, Killing a, a a Christian baby to get his blood to put a, make a mitzvah uh, uh, out of it. It's yeah. it's the same mindset. It's, yeah. it's it's one thing that racists and fascists have in mind uh, in common is um, low uh, uh, low IQ uh, of understanding uh, the complexity of human nature. And it's also what has one meaning and one simple explanation. And if you take the whites in South Africa, the whites in the United States, even now, okay, and uh, the Zionists and the Nazis, they all have the same thing. It's always the world is simple, white, black, and white, okay? And uh, we are the best, the rest are bad, and anything goes. Anything, mm. any explanation goes with, with that kind of simplicity. They gotta be, they gotta be uh, actually a, a sick person with a very low, low IQ to understand to accept such a, a heresy. Mm. Yes, yes. And the word that they use is evil. Once they use the word evil, then they say they can use any means necessary Absolutely. to destroy the evil, including yeah. evil. <laughs> you know, like an excuse for evil. Is the use of the word evil 
It's Very so cool. simple. It's incredible. I know because I meet them all, you know, at the vigil on Sundays. Not that I'm going back tomorrow because of my knee, but they come up with the most simplistic arguments. So I just, you know, like, Absolutely. you know, give them some additional information and then they, they sort of falter. There's a skip in their narrative and they start to listen. And then some of them actually, you know, calm down and start talking. And you can see all this, you know, on the videos that I'm putting up on YouTube from the body cam yes. that I wear That's there for self-protection yeah. there on the vigil. But in the last two weeks, there have been no attacks. I think they're beginning to feel the pressure, especially from, you know, so many different directions at the same time. International Court of Justice, International Criminal Court is now going to indict, you know, the, the leaders of the Zionist state as criminals. And then they're on... Uh, how many fronts now? I've lost count of the number of fronts that they have a war going on now. They have in, 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 in South Lebanon, with South Lebanon. They have with Gaza. They have on the West Bank. They have with Yemen. Uh, they have with Iraq. And now they're opening another front, six front, uh, with Iran. Yeah. It's six fronts. And all these six fronts... It's, they are stagnating. They mm. are not making any headway except the only the only front they make headway. If you want to call it headway, it's it's the by the genocide they are carrying out in Gaza, which is uh, despicable, despicable not, not just on them on the Western world that's still mm. supporting them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The white um, the white Western world that mm. who look at the Palestinians as a brown people are second class citizen to humanity they are humanity the rest are not they're mm. just numbers they just uh, collateral damage and uh, it's always the fault of their own doing and their own people who put them in harm's way they don't these people are the the, the, the white and of course uh, the zionists are culturally maybe some of them they have some uh, brown uh, skin but culturally they are white they are white yeah. anglo-saxon westerners that's what they are yeah even the mizrahim the jewish arabs that uh, came to uh, the zionist state you know with great hopes of uh, getting a prosperous life etc everything that was promised to them they're treated like slaves by the white they Ashkenazi were not supremacists anything. they were not promised anything they've been they've been herded against their will uh. to be brought into Palestine. They were living uh, normal life like any other Arab in, in, in Morocco, in Algeria, in Tunisia, in Libya, in Egypt. Actually, in all the Arab world except the Gulf countries. They were in Yemen, they were in Iraq, they were prosperous, they are, mm. they are merchants, they are teachers, they are uh, actually lots of music uh, creators, uh, you name yeah. it. You even actors uh, mm -hmm. in, in in the early Egyptian uh, movies, they were there's some Jews in them, and they were known. Okay, uh. these Jews been forced. They've been forced first by the British, okay, second by the uh, the proxies of the British, like uh, rulers, like the Moroccan regime or the Iraqi regime. Third, by the Zionists, their own doing, they act, they actually admitted by planting bombs, mm. okay, and murdering Jews, as it's been done by the Arab Muslims because of the creation of Israel. So with this, all this, with the collaboration of the British and French mm. agencies, they brought mm. those people against their will into Palestine, and what they got them, they got them into areas that is way underdeveloped, has no running water, has no electricity, made them work as a slave labor for mm -hmm. them because at that time that uh, Palestinians were not allowed to work for the Zionists. So they actually, for the first 10, 15 years of bringing the, the Arab Jews, they were actually nothing but slaves. But over the time, they uh, brainwashed their children to mm. accept being white, being mm. white. Okay, we are Westerners, we are democracy, we are this and that. And uh, it's so sad. It is so sad. 
now the uh, the Arab Jews, or they call them Mizrahi Jews, are actually part of the Zionist establishment. Uh, it's very sad, but it's true. And the military, they're very big militarists now as well. They've been indoctrinated. I spoke to some of them when I was in prison there, and uh, they lost their Arabic. You know, even one guy who said he wanted to learn Arabic again, but they lost it. You know, they weren't allowed to speak Arabic. But I noticed something in the Iran attack, uh, in repost to, to the attack on the consular buildings, you know, they used a lot, a lot of, you know, like slow uh, drones and missiles, you know, that were just there, you know, to be wasted and to waste the, uh, the Iron Dome uh, missile arsenal. So, you know, they lost like 300, you know, missiles there, you know, uh, 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 Iron Dome missiles, they've lost them. Now they have to replenish them. What, now do, you there's mean, a bill. what do you mean 300? Each, uh, the average for each missile or rocket coming in onto the, Palis the occupied Palestine, you usually shoot in average three to five missiles in order to intercept. Oh, uh, wow. each, one, each one Iron Dome costs uh over fifty thousand dollars each rocket whereas yeah. uh other the other the higher up ones that goes up to one million each missile missile wow. israel wow. israel spent with its allies 1.35 billion dollars within hours in defending its its itself okay one point okay. three incredible <laughs> okay so that 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 uh, emphasizes the point that they have a diminution of their stocks of the missiles for the Iron Dome system. So they have to get them replenished by the United States, right? Now, there's a bill right now, Steve, before, is it Congress? Congress. And they've divided up the armaments bill into three sectors, okay? There's Palestine, mm -hmm. there's Ukraine, and, and, uh, and there's something else. Okay, so... Is it going to pass? What happens if it doesn't pass? If this allocation of uh, U.S. dollars, you know, for it's going to pass. More... It's going to pass. I mean, the Republicans are going to sign off on it. Um, they, the United States, is going to send Israel money, irregardless of the bills. The United States have been sending Israel money, irregardless of the bills. But I, I think it'll pass, um, just so Biden can. Try to win his election and say, "Hey, I help Ukraine, I help Israel," uh, and he has some support from from from, from Republicans. We'll see. I think it'll pass, but you know, I don't. I I have to be very frank. I don't spend a lot of time following what the government does with the money because they do what they want to do. When it comes to military, they never listen to protests. They never listen to uh, the average person. They just they do whatever they want to make sure that Lockheed Martin, the Raytheon, and um, Boeing get, get get all the money, and then um, Israel and Ukraine get, get get some guns. I do think though the funding for Ukraine is about to is about to end because the war is being lost so badly by the United States and Ukraine. That money is going to get dried up, or they will they'll give some money for Ukraine. And then uh, Zelensky and his, and his boys would just steal it. That's what's going to happen with, with Ukraine money, because mm -hmm. the, they they can't create enough arm, the, the arm. They can't give enough guns. They can't give them enough tanks. They can't give it. It's just it's just not working. And there are no Ukrainian people to fight. The people overseas are going to try not come back. Um, they're going to start. They're going to start re recruiting the twenty year olds. You know, killing their future. So I expect some rebellions. I expect some rebellions by Ukrainians myself. We'll, we'll see. We'll mm. see. I just don't see them. Well, you know, the war is being lost. Why should I die? Mm. Just don't mm. fight, dude. Yeah. Well, in there's Palestine, no, there's... in Palestine, the Zionist regime already takes 18-year-olds, you know, no, <laughs> both no, men and no, women. The, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Ukrainians do it differently. They, they put the older men out to fight first. And 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 save the youth for last. Huh. So there's a, there's an angle of uh, this money or money is being spent uh, by United States on Ukraine and the Zionist state. It's uh, 
the uh, the prophets, uh, the okay. the the military uh, complex that makes out of this. Who in turn many of congressmen and women, of course, they have big stakes and and uh, shares their shareholders in these yes. manufacturers. So basically. Yeah. They steal money from the taxpayers, the American taxpayers. They give this money to uh, buy weapons from the American manufacturers to send it to to kill uh, more Ukrainians and Russians and Palestinians. Right. Meantime, uh, Chuck Schumer and his ilk and uh, Biden and his administration are making big, big amount of money profits from these sure. sales. Of these people, so basically, what they're doing, they're borrowing the money from the big banks, okay, on the name of the taxpayers' money, like, like you, Dave, and 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 um, they just uh, mortgage uh, your future, American people's future, to kill people and making more and more money to themselves, like like Lindsey Graham when he got into the. First, he was elected. He got he had no money. Like he just maybe like few hundred thousand dollars. Now he worth about hundred twenty eight million or something uh, or plus. Okay, all that, all that from shares within Lockheed Martin and uh, uh, all those uh, big uh, name companies. So basically, uh, the American uh, or the American establishment and the American elite they do profit big time from wars. In, in uh, around the world, whether it's uh, it's uh, the, it's Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria, Palestine, uh, you name it, they're making big big uh, big profits. They don't care about the cost because those people who die are not whites; they are just brown people. Who cares about white people, or black people, or yellow people? They're just just uh, another another look alike uh, subhumans to them in their in the backs of their minds. Uh, so um, that's so sad. It is so sad uh, to see how vicious the American establishment is, um, whether it is uh, Barack Obama or whether it's this, right. uh, this uh, moron Biden or the guy before him, that fascist uh, Trump. And the one thing I want to add real quickly is um, the cost. They, over, they overcharged the government so much money they charge yes. they, they, they char, i mean they charge there's an old back in the 70s there was, there was a story about a toilet costing like 700 dollars for a toilet that they, that they, they were charging for one of those contractors so that that has just gotten worse so not well, only are they making money but they're really ripped they're really ripped, really ripping us off absolutely because, because there mm-hmm. is no um there is no price control on what they'll what they'll charge and the parts okay. cost so much. I mean, it's really a highway robbery against mm-hmm. the government, towards the government. Like you said, toward the taxpayer, literally. The American people pay for it, and they try whatever they want. The government, sure, no problem, I'll pay it. And they sit out to kill people. That's it. Right. Yeah, and the American people are taking it for now. But I wonder, economically, the debt of the United States, what is it now like? 13, 14 trillion dollars, American dollars, or something like you're that. Talking about, you're talking about surp- surpassing twenty-five trillion dollars. Uh, wow. The, okay. I so am, the IMF has warned the United States about its budget. The IMF mm-hmm. has warned the U.S. about its budget. Now, when they and that's a U.S. institution. Yeah. The IMF has warned the has warned the government about its budget, so you know it's in bad shape. They can only get away with this, you know, because the American dollar is like the the standard, you know, the international standard of conversion, you know. So any trade goes through being converted into an American dollar because the other currencies, you know, are not considered to be viable and exchangeable. But that's changing because that's BRICS changing, is here. Baby. That's changing. That's changing. Now, yep. One, BRICS is here. And two, you know, even Zimbabwe has converted its currency to be gold-based. Because Africa has gold, they just have to take control of it, and then they have you know a solid currency, you know which is uh, beyond you know what the United States American dollar can accomplish, you know which doesn't have that backing. So, 
who knows what's going to happen? Nobody knows what's going to happen, you know, to this the American economy, but it certainly cannot last. It is it has no endurance factor. No, and nothing can keep it going. You know, it, with a death rate like that, there's going to be a crisis. Can I what kind of crisis? Thing? Who knows? Let me mention something that's happened in the United States. There's been and um, and I, man, probably he probably you've heard about this. There have been a lot of people starting. The United States is trying to go the route of West of Germany. In the sense of outlawing protests, there was a major a major arrest in Colombia where they called the police in against anti anti um, anti anti Zionist protesters who were supporting the Palestinian cause of uh, liberation and freedom were arrested by police in Colombia, and mm -hmm. Google employees were fired. Mm -hmm. Twenty Google That's employees so were fired for demonstrating. So we're mm -hmm. starting to see more repression. Outright repression, firing, banning, suspension from schools, people who are who are demonstrating their 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 support for the Palestinian people. I I, I just want to mention that to everybody who's who's watching the program. Okay, okay, we have a, a couple of minutes. You know, let's take each a minute to conclude, and then uh, when there's the urgent conditions necessary, we will come back this during the course of this week. You know, to do another broadcast so that you can find out what's really going on. Okay, Ahmed, what what is going to be happening? I think I think the 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 war is been stagnating uh, on all fronts, but for the Zionists, uh, I think uh, the Zionists they will escalate because they have no they cannot uh, stop because stopping means capitulation in their mind. They'll escalate. And they will be hit hard, and they will lose the war, and there will be uh, the diminishing role of the Zionist state including uh, that's leading to United States diminishing role in the Middle East. I think uh, the future holds uh, good surprises for the people. The people united will be will never be defeated. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the United States vetoed a, a motion to recognize the state of Palestine as a full member of the United Nations. Predictable. Again. Very predictable. Very predictable. Good. And yet they claim that they're supporting, you know, the recognition of Palestine. They say that they will one day, one day, you know, like they will come around to it, you know, somehow, somewhere. Uh, abs absolute heresy. Absolute heresy. There's yeah. an old saying. There's an old saying by the by the indigenous indigenous people in the United States: "White men speak with forked tongue." <laughs> yeah, that's that's all yeah. that is. For sure. Okay. Good session. Okay, okay looking forward to our Palestine, next. Amandla, to the Palestinian people and thanks, South oh. Africa. Yes. Yes. Hura Palestina. Free Palestine. Yes, sir.